Autumn is already with us and winter is not far away. As the weather begins to get colder, the Methodist Mission has warned power price increases well above the consumer price index are about to hit uninsulated homes. Mission Director Laura Black is here to tell us why she's raising the issue. Good evening, Laura. Good evening. Now, you say that you expect power price rises to be above the CPI. Why? Well, the North Island Power Company has already announced power increases of between 5 and 6 per cent in the last two weeks. And where North Island Power Companies go, I'm sure South Island Power Companies will follow. Plus, which every year about this time, just as the winter is coming on us, power companies do this. And we've seen this for the last three years, above CPI power increases across the board. Now, you say that the uh, the bigger problem is poorly insulated homes here yeah. in Dunedin. What are you seeing in your line of work? Well, we're not seeing anything yet. Um, typically, what we see is in about three months' time, as people are getting the first of the power bills for winter, the shock is arriving, um, and we get into the classic heat and eat scenario. Uninsulated houses, of course, are the, the great concern because uh, you're just paying to heat your outdoor area, aren't you? It's going through the roof, it's coming out through the floor, and it's going through the walls, and particularly the uncurtained windows. Uh, last year we had a large number of clients who were looking at putting bubble wrap up. Very cheap, very effective double glazing. Um, you start to see tips like that being shared in the client group, you know that people are really, really struggling. So we're trying to call attention to this now before the first power shock bills arrive in households because uninsulated houses, you're just turning on a tap and letting, letting the power go out. What is the result of the heat and eat scenario? Um, often mum doesn't eat. That's, that's really classic. And we're seeing, you know, last winter we saw a whole lot of children who were getting one meal a day, if they were lucky. We've all seen Campbell Live um, uh, stuff on, on food and schools. And, um, you know, classically mum does without. Is there something you're seeing a lot of in this particular city? Well, we're seeing some. We're also seeing some parents selling prescription drugs on the black market to get through the um, um, food bill for the week. So it it's, was crunchy last year. We're expecting it to be worse this year. Mm. Now, you've called on the Minister of Housing, Nick Smith, to speed up his work on the issue. What are you asking the government to do? We're asking them to prioritise the idea of a building warrant of fitness mm. for rental properties. Um, it, it was raised by the Children's Commissioner last year as part of their research into children in poverty. Uh, we know from the Building Research Institute of New Zealand that only 40% of New Zealand's rental stock is considered good or better. So 60% is considered less than good or disastrous. And of course here in Dunedin and in the south it matters the most. It matters the most for both uh, temperature, keeping it warm, but also keeping it dry, keeping those respiratory tract infections away, keeping the kids healthy so that they're not having lots of absences from school, keeping mums and dads able to go to work and hold on to that job and hold on to that pay packet. This has been an issue for years now, though. Are we seeing any improvement? Years and years. No, I don't think we are. And that's why this idea that's been floated by Russell Wills, the Children's Commissioner of a building warrant of fitness for rental properties, uh, um, is such a good idea. And, of course, we saw the Students Association here trialling some stuff with their Gold Star scheme for um, uh, student rental properties. And that's, I think, had a bit of an effect last year and hopefully will have more of an effect this year. Um, but it's urgently needed and, and now the idea is on the table, there's no reason for the government not to embrace it and make a significant difference in the lives of people living in poor quality housing. You don't think it could have a negative flow on effect though for renters? I mean landlords will most likely pass on the costs of the building warrant of fitness. Something has to give. Um, and in, in the way that we're looking at earthquake proofing for all of our buildings, um, I think if we said across the board, actually, landlords, you've been taking a reasonable profit for some time now, and they have, time to invest some of that back in, in, in the future of your rental stock. And if all of them had to do it, I think what we'd find is the price would settle quite quickly. Methodist Mission Director Laura Black, thanks very much for your time. Thank you.